So that brings us to the charting components. These charting components are something that Matt and myself are going to show you today. And before we get into the demos, I'm going to demo a little bit and then Matt will too. I'd like to show you where you could get these. Um, these are open source charting components that you will find on GitHub. And we've been working on these for quite some time. And recently we got them to the point where we were able to get them ready for a release to the public. And so I'm going to walk you through them now and, and show you what's available for you with these charting components. And then Matt's going to take it one step deeper. So as I said, you'll find these in this GitHub repository. And what do the charting components do? Well, these, this little uh, animated GIF here gives you an idea of the different types of charts that you can create with these components. So you can see there's eight different types of charts plus a Gantt chart that you can make. Now, the important thing that you'll notice in this repository is that this MS app file, this is actually the chart component that you will import into your Power App to use them. To get started, you click this link down here that says Quick Start, right above the picture. And when you click Quick Start, it's going to open up this documentation that you see right here. So inside of this documentation, yep. we walk you through how to add these charting components to your Power App. And I'm going to show that to you now. And when we're done with this, we're going to have a chart on our Power App in just a matter of like a minute or so and completely configure it and have it ready to go. After I show you how to do that, Matt's going to come back and he's going to show you actually how you do it with dynamic data that comes from different data sources, such as a SharePoint list or an Excel document. The other thing I'd like to point out real quick is in our documentation, you'll find the quick start, you'll find documentation about each type of chart, the various properties you can set on it and what they do. You'll also find how to integrate with data, which Matt is going to show you. A quick walkthrough of the various properties you use to style the chart and the chart axes. So without further ado, let's go now and update this chart. OK, so what does it look like to get started with these components? First, you open a Power App and you have a blank screen. Then select Components, pick the ellipsis, and hit Import Components. When you do that, you will find in the Quick Start that there is a link right here that tells you how to download the component. So you click that link, pick the Download button. Now you have the component on your machine. So as you come back now to your chart, Import upload file, and then here is where you will then go and pick that one that you just downloaded. Here's the one I just downloaded right now. You only have one copy. Let name that. Hit open. When you hit open, those charts get added right here. So the one called chart can make eight different types of chart. The one called Gantt only makes a Gantt chart. To add it to your screen, go to the screen you want it on, open the custom section, and drag the chart on. Now that you've dragged the chart onto your screen, what you can do is you can resize that chart to however you like. The type of the chart right here gets set with this property. So this could be pie, scatter, line, bar, etc. everything but the Gantt. The other properties here are used to set how this chart appears. You can either click on them and set them up on top, or you can go into advanced and set them here. Matt's going to show you how the different color properties are used, but essentially I have five different types of data being passed into this sample chart that you get out of the box. You can see those five categories here. If I remove the first five colors in it, you can see how easy it is to change the color scheme of your chart to something else. Perhaps I'd like to change the title to something a little different. I can make a really great title really quick like that. And maybe I decide I don't want the subtitle on my chart, so I'll delete it as well. 
perhaps I'm looking at the legend of the chart and saying, hmm, I wish I would have that in a different spot or I could affect how that looks. Well, you can do that with the legend property right here. I can turn it on or off too. Let's say I want to move it to the top. I'll just go like that. And now it's at the top of my chart. If I didn't want it, I'll just set this true to false or I can bring it back. Now, when I come to the bottom, there's a couple other options that I can do. Every chart is going to come have the name of the chart and then a name of a property of some of particular option you can affect about it. In this case, the pie chart is saying the data labels are turned on because this is true. If I make it false, now you can see they disappear. Finally, my data section, which I think is easier to look at in the top up here, looks like this. Data is bound in key value pairs for this particular type of chart. Actually, this is not my data value. Here it is. There it is. So here's the different data that I have in the chart. Obviously, I'm showing you hard-coded data here, which may or may not probably wouldn't occur in a real-life chart. But as you can see as I change it, the chart reacts immediately. So what Matt's going to do now is Matt's going to take over where I left off on showing you what these charts get you just out of the box and basic configuration. And he's going to show you how you can take these charts and dial them into dynamic data. Thanks, Todd. Hi, everybody. So first things first, let's look at what the schema is for a Gantt chart. Let's go ahead and click on the chart, and then we'll click on data. And here we can see what it's looking for. So real simple, we have this property, which right now is just set to a static group of values, as well as the labels. So the legend down here on the bottom right now, uh, the labels on the left hand row side, and then the meat of the chart, which is the intervals table. And that's just looking for values of uh, start date, end date, color index, which this correlates to the color table of what colors can be used. So the first value in, in the color table will correlate to this, and as well as the process index, which aligns for which row you want to be on the Gantt chart. So this is the static data. But first, so we're going to be switching it over to Dynamics. So let's go ahead and look at my data source. And I have a simple SharePoint list here called Project Tasks. I have a title row, a start date, an end date, and that's uh, the core of what you need. Now I have a couple other columns, project name and assigned to, because you can really make this dynamic and, and um, add a lot more, uh, you know, a lot more options. You have the sky's the limit, really. So now that we've seen the data source, let's go ahead and let's look at, I'm going to switch Power App screens. And so here we see a Again, chart with some of my data. So we see the labels and the different days. And so let's go look in and find out how to do this. So let's switch over, or let's click on the data property. And actually, it might not be what you expect. So we have this set to a global variable because we are setting this data on, on the onVisible property. So we'll go to the onVisible property of the screen. And here we are. So first step is to create a collection from our data. So I have a simple clear, clear collect, uh, name our collection, pull it from our project task lists. If we click on our data connection here, we can see the data connection to this project task list. Let's go ahead and switch back. Okay, so that's step one. And actually we can go ahead and quickly view the collection project task here. So here you can see the collection's been built. Switching back, okay. So next step is, and this was an actually an optional thing. I'm using the titles for these tasks on both the legend and the rows. So I just set a variable called titles. I ran a for all function and just collected those. And by doing that, I was able to call this once and you can see, oops, my bad, that's not what I do. By selecting this, you can just say, okay, so I have a simple value of the titles. So the next is formatting the data into the schema of the table. So I have this wrapped in a global variable, but what we need here is, so then you just assign the legends to our titles variable, and, which is the table, and same thing for this C labels property, and then the intervals. So again, I do a for all function for all items in our 
project task collection. And then I just assign the start property with my start date column, end date, the color index, and process, which in this case, there's multiple ways to do this, but I just grabbed the ID of each row in the collection and set that so that's unique and changing each time. A couple other things I did which were to make it additionally dynamic was the Gantt chart has a default start and end date to show the range, and I didn't want that to be set to a hard-coded value, so I set a variable of today and formatted it to be a short date format because that's what uh, the scheme is looking for. And I also made another variable called var three months, and basically same type of thing, but I added use the data add function and added 90 days. So each time we're looking at the chart, I'm gonna see from today in the next 30, 90 days rather. So let's go back to the chart for a second and check out the options. And in the options for this chart, this is where I have plugged in those optional uh, dynamic pieces. So for Gantt start date, I have my VAR today, and for Gantt end date, I have my VAR three months. And there's lots of other options, which again are clearly outlined in our documentation. And that's how this chart gets built. All right, so that's how easy it is to connect to a SharePoint data source. Um, really we might have a, that. thanks. I think we have another example here, just a similar example. And this is all outlined in our, we, we take you through this. This is connecting to a Excel sheet. And over here in the data, we can see we have a movies Excel spreadsheet in our OneDrive uh, location. And so if we go ahead and just uh, get our data from Excel that populates a, a collection of movies and votes. And then we just bind that data to the table. And we can see how easy, easy that is. So again, same type of uh, method that you've seen before. We are setting global variable. Again, that part is optional but we are setting the labels for this type of chart, running through and grabbing the genres of our collection. And then this is a key value pair. So we're the key are our values and then the votes is the values. And so that you can see how simple it is to make this dynamic. And again, this is our all um, outline tutorial in our documentation. So that's my part, Todd. Awesome, thanks Matt. So one thing, <laughs> I figured this out in the chat while you were pre presenting that, Matt, like didn't even mention like how did, what happens, what was what this built on top of? So uh, these are Canvas chart controls. They work in Canvas Power Apps and the technology under the hood that is drawing the charts here is SVG. And that's why they're responsive and scale and very, very lightweight. I see a question, why is it not in a component library? Quite honestly, it's because we just haven't packaged it in a component library yet, and it, it's in our component, and we've been really working hard on the documentation recently to release it so people can understand how to pick it up and use it easily. Happy to see it done. If you'd like to help out with it, like we totally encourage contributions on all this. And we really see this and hope that this is like the foundation of an awesome set of charting components for the whole community. We, I would love to see this grow to dozens of components. And I know that Emmanuel has already said he's got some feedback on a brief glimpse of it on how we could improve passing the data in. And as we all saw with what he can do with components, Last month, I bet he's got a good idea. Um, real quick shout out to Emmanuel Gallus, Sancho Harker, Reza Durami, David Van Heerden, and all of our teammates at Canvas who uh, gave us feedback on this and helped uh, help us build it out so we could get it to the point where everyone can use it. We hope you all enjoyed a lot.